Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All. So in line with the other reviews that I've done, I'm going to do a full self-driving beta 10.8 release review. Uh, this one's an interesting one. There's actually quite a few obviously large things that they're doing here. Uh, sorry for not recording my face, but again, I'm in Mexico. I'm just doing this on my laptop and probably the audio quality is not gonna be the best, but you know, <laughs> bear with me. I figured that this was important enough to try to get out quickly. Um, I still don't, for, for the record, I still have not downloaded it to my car at home it hasn't given me that option and of course i can't drive it until i get home anyway but that will be tomorrow so merry christmas to all who celebrate that and merry christmas eve to all who celebrate that and merry december 24th for those who don't celebrate christmas all right anyway on to the release notes i'll start at the top so we have improved object attributes network to reduce false cut-in slowdowns by 50 percent and lane assignment error by 19 percent so the object attributes is the important thing here and sorry this is a picture so i can't do this thank you to people on twitter by the way who post these so that those of us who don't have it yet can look at it but anyway the object attributes network basically says okay i've identified something now what is it and so essentially what we're doing here is that we're the the attributes network is telling the full self-driving controls whether or not to slow down in a specific situation where there might be a car that is is going faster or it might not even be a car it could be something else right so anyway it's it's basically fixing the attributes issue and it should the upshot of this of course is that you're going to have these false cut in slowdowns so basically it should be able to determine whether a car is cutting into your lane or out of your lane and whether you have to stop or not. And I think anybody who's driven full self-driving beta or even the regular full self-driving has seen this happen before where the car, you'll see a car cutting out of your lane or something. And then after the car has basically exited your lane, then the car will, then your car will slow down. The ego car will slow down because it is not reacting properly to that other car even though you as a human being would say like oh great i'm fine i'm going to be perfectly fine and, and I, I won't hit that car so i don't need to slow down but the car slows down which is kind of annoying uh, it's also interesting that this reduces the lane assignment error by 19 percent. i believe what that is is that sometimes when you get to an area where let's say there's three lanes and you need to eventually be in the right lane to make a turn or something or just to be in the right lane and you see a turn lane come up it will actually try to jump into the turn lane and that's obviously a bad thing because you don't want to be in a turn lane when you're not trying to turn right at that point or left or whatever it is so that should reduce that again probably by attributing the proper like this is a turn lane <laughs> more or less that's what it's going to be thinking this is a turn lane so it'll reduce that uh, network error as well so <clears throat> hopefully we will see both of these things in the drives themselves a 50 percent reduction in false cut and slowdown is a pretty big reduction so hopefully we'll see that immediately uh the next one's my favorite one because i think it's just andre carpathian team just being <laughs> jerks about this i think <laughs> anyway there it's improved photon to control vehicle response latency by 20 percent on average i believe what that's saying is from the second that a photon hits the cameras to when the vehicle makes a decision about what to do the latency which is the amount of time in milliseconds or something that it takes to go from seeing an object to making a decision about the object has been reduced by 20 percent they just did it in a kind of a fun way to say that right photon to control vehicle which is pretty cool i, I like that but anyway so so good for those guys for for having fun with these uh release notes but anyway so i believe all that is is just basically from the moment that the camera takes in photons and sees something to the moment when the car itself is actually making a decision about what to do the latencies were reduced by 20 percent, which is actually a fifth i mean that's that's a pretty good latency reduction so that's awesome so that should definitely help things out as well all right next expanded use of regen braking and autopilot down to zero miles per hour for smoother stops and improved energy efficiency i did not actually realize that the car uh, didn't use regen all the way down to zero miles per hour when you were doing full self-driving so that's actually cool so that should actually improve battery life a teeny bit but also it will make it much smoother because as every everybody who uses regenerative braking knows that is a much much smoother brake than actually stepping on the brakes and hopefully that will also reduce some of those like clunky things where it just goes bang and stops really really fast so anyway we'll see but that that should it should improve comfort a little bit but mostly it should um i mean sorry it should improve efficiency a little bit but most importantly it should improve comfort 
All right, the next one, improved VRU or vulnerable road user. All right, I said it correctly. Pedestrians, cyclists, motorcycles, animals. Ladder. I noticed that they included animals this time. They didn't used to have animals in there, but that's nice. <laughs> so dogs and cats and squirrels should be happier. Anyway, it should reduce the lateral velocity error by 4.9% by adding more auto-labeled and simulated training examples to the data set. So basically, they're pulling more actual situations out but they're also if you go back to the ai day um video that i did and i'll put a link to it here uh you yeah, up in the corner anyway you can see that they have a huge huge simulator that's really really good and so what they can take is relatively rare cases like an alligator going across the road or something like that at least if you live where i do that's pretty rare um and what they can do is they can simulate a whole bunch of alligators going across the road from one or two real examples so anyway by doing that and by using more auto-labeled actual situations, they've reduced the lateral velocity error, which is basically the speed that they're walking at right angles to you. So not the direction that they're going with you, but the way they're going crosswise to you. They've reduced that by about 5%. So that's really, really cool. And basically it just means that the car will adjust better for pedestrians in particular, but cyclists, motorcycles, in that crossing motion, and it will allow the car to just be smoother and also be safer. So that's actually great. 5% doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot. I mean, think about that in terms of lives saved or people being hurt or something. That's a really, really big deal. So that's great. All right, and we're gonna get back to that in just a minute. <clears throat> Next one is reduced false slowdowns for crossing objects by improved velocity estimates for objects at the end of visibility. So the objects at the end of visibility, when you see the visual, visual when you see the visualization on the full self driving, you can see that the, the everything sort of fades out. The cars, the people, the whatever it is, sort of fade out in the distance at the sides and at the front far away. And essentially what they're doing is they're improving the velocity estimates for those things that are really far away. And that actually will help a lot because as they then enter the scene, either that you're coming towards them or that they're moving sideways across the scene, in either of those cases, it's going to be doing a better job of estimating the velocity for these things at the ends, which means it doesn't have to do as much work as they get closer to the center of view. And remember, those pixels are super, super small, right? I mean, the objects are small in terms of the number of pixels when they're far, far away. So that's really, really cool that they're able to do that. <clears throat> All right, the next one's also really cool. Reduced false slowdowns by adding geometric checks to cross-validate lane assignment of objects. So again, what they're doing is like a human being would do. We humans will, we look at a lane and we think of it as kind of a trapezoid or maybe you could think of it as a pyramid or something. But essentially you, you see it going off into the distance and your mind is geometrically fitting that and saying like, okay, this is a straight line road and it's just got perspective shifts. And so <clears throat> essentially what the car is doing is that sort of thing. It's, it's learning geometry, which is really cool at a basic level. And then it's cross-validating the lane assignment of objects. So what it's doing is it's figuring out what lane you're supposed to be in, what lane everybody else is in, and it's using geometry to do that, which is reducing false slowdowns because it doesn't think people are in your lane when they're not. So that's actually really, really cool. All right, next one, improved speed profile for unprotected left turns when visibility is low. So yeah, okay, so unprotected left turns are you know problematic. They're the, the, the biggest bugaboo for full self-driving really, except for, I guess, parked cars or something. But anyway, when the visibility is low, so that would be nighttime or if it's raining or if it's foggy or something like that. So it's going to, instead of creeping out and doing that really, really scary thing where it goes super slowly across the left turn lane and makes the left turn, it's going to go more quickly. And of course, those of you who live in like Australia or England or something and have the left-hand driving, it will be the same thing for right-hand turns when it gets to you eventually. All right. <clears throat> added more natural behavior to bias over bike lanes during right turns. So it, again, this is maybe something that you don't know about, just depends on where you live, but in most places in the United States, there are blocked off areas on the right where uh, bicycles are allowed to go. The problem is that you, of course, have to go over that lane in order to make a right-hand turn. So there are usually areas that are kind of cross-hatched instead of solid lines, and those allow you to go over the bike lane. And so now, <clears throat> It looks what, like what they're doing is they're just allowing the car, it doesn't say exactly how it's doing it, but it's going to allow the car to go over the bike lane and park in the bike lane as it's making a right-hand turn, which is the correct legal thing to do. So that's all to the good. All right, 
And this one's interesting, improved comfort when yielding to jaywalkers by better modeling of stopping region with soft and hard deadlines. So basically jaywalkers are people who just walk out not in crosswalk areas, so <clears throat> bad for you. But, but you know, human beings do that, so you gotta deal with that. But basically what it's doing is it's, it's modeling where the car is going to need to stop. And I assume what it's doing, the soft and hard deadlines, a hard deadline would be the absolute drop dead moment. Like I've got to stop or I'm going to hit this person. And then what it's doing is it's adding a soft deadline, which is saying like, okay, add an extra five or eight meters to that or something. And sometime between the five or ex, extra five or eight meters and that absolute hard deadline, I can slow down and stop there, which basically means that your car is not gonna jerk to a stop, it's going to slow down more smoothly, which will be very, very helpful. <laughs> so that'll be nice. Again, none of those clunky things when you hear the brake just go like bang like that when it, when it stops too violently, which can also be dangerous, of course, because somebody can hit you from behind if you slow down too quickly. All right, the next one, improved smoothness for merge control with better modeling of merge point and ghost objects positioned at the edge of visibility. <clears throat> so merge control, again, has always been a problem, generally speaking, on the highways, but also just on a city street when you're trying to merge into another lane. But basically what it's doing is it's modeling the merge point, the thing where it knows that it needs to merge in. It's doing a better job of getting there. And I, the ghost object thing, I don't know if that's something that it's creating itself, like it's creating ghost objects up there. I wish I understood what they meant by ghost objects. But I think that's what they mean is that it's actually creating like its own <laughs> virtual objects out there positioned at the edge of visibility or and or what it's doing is it's seeing objects that it's not quite sure what they are. But at the edge of visibility means that it's able to then look forward further to the end of a merge lane and it's able to figure out better where it needs to merge because I know it drives me crazy and I know it drives misinformation crazy <laughs> that a lot of times when it's merging, it waits until the last possible second when the lane itself starts to move over. That's a very, very dangerous behavior so again hopefully that will allow it to merge more smoothly and earlier which will be very very important all right and let me blow this one up here all right and move down just a couple more of these things all right the next one is improved overall comfort by enforcing stricter lateral jerk bounds on in trajectory optimizer. So this will just be nice. It just won't go back and forth as much. So lateral is the side to side sort of motion, which can be very annoying if it's jerking around. So Tesla takes a lot of effort to make sure that the lateral jerk is not, and jerk is the, the third derivative. So you've got speed is the first derivative of distance, uh, acceleration, sorry, velocity is the first derivative of acceleration. <laughs> some time goodness of gracious of distance over time acceleration is the second derivative and jerk is the third derivative my goodness it's too early in the morning to be doing this sorry folks but anyway so jerk is just it's it's just that back and forth sort of like i don't know if you're on a bad roller coaster that's like jiggling you back and forth it's that sort of feeling as you as you go bang 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 back and forth you don't want to do that so it's enforcing stricter lateral jerk bounds so basically it's optimizing for comfort it's putting that in <clears throat> and this is actually a good sign in sort of a meta sense, because what that means is that they feel like they've got the safety elements taken care of well enough at this point that they can start dealing really, really strongly with comfort. And it's much more important that the car is safe than it, that it's comfortable, but once you get to the part where it's safe, you want it to be comfortable. So in a meta sense, this is actually super important that we've got these lateral jerk um, optimizations going on. So anyway, it's being optimized in the training, but that means that the car should be smoother on a side-to-side -side sort of motion. So that should be fantastic. All right, improved short, de uh, excuse me, improved short deadline lane changes through richer trajectory modeling. So again, this is where a lot of times the car has to make a rapid lane change. Something comes up, there's construction, there's cars stopped in front of you, whatever that is, or it just needs to get over because of navigation but it's doing a better job of trajectory modeling so that it can do faster lane changes and it can model that better. And that's one of those things where it often will get stuck in the versions that I have driven. It just will, it won't be able to make those lane changes at the last minute. So we will see how that works. It just says improved, it doesn't say how much. So hopefully that will be improving. So, all right, and then two more to go here. Improved integration between lead vehicle overtake and lane change gap selection. So again, here we've got, you're coming up on a car and let's say you're going 45 miles an hour and they're going 40 and there's a gap to the side and it's making a decision about whether to move over into the other lane and whether it has enough time to do that because there's cars coming up in the other lane. And so it's just, it's integrating between what it's looking at is the lead vehicle overtake. So it's saying like, okay, there's 10 seconds until I reach this other vehicle if I don't slow down. And then there's also another 
apparently a whole other head on this Hydra network that is then looking at the lane change and saying like, how much time do I have to make this lane change? How fast is this person coming up in the other lane behind me? How much time do I do that? And what they need to do apparently is these two heads on the Hydra net were not talking to each other very well. So now they're being integrated better. And so now that the two of them will talk to each other. And so the one, the, uh, the lead vehicle overtake will say, well, you've got 10 seconds to overtake this vehicle. And then the other one on the side says, well, you've got 15 seconds before this car gets up behind you if you don't go faster. And therefore it's able to say like, oh, you can go ahead and make this lane change now. So instead of hesitating and missing the opportunity, it should be much more aggressive and assertive, not aggressive. It should be much more assertive about making lane changes. So that should be really, really fantastic. And then the last one's a pretty simple one. That's just updated, updated trajectory line visualization, which basically means that we should see cooler, prettier graphics. That little uh, dotted line thing that goes out in front of you as you're driving should look more attractive when so we'll see what that looks like i don't know what that exactly means but that's what it should look like all right i hope this has been helpful i really can't wait to drive this hopefully i will have it sitting on my car by the time i get home it will be very late on the 25th before i get home so it'll be the 26th before i get a chance to drive the car with the beta hopefully but i will be really interested to try out all of these different elements that are on here in the meantime again everybody have a lovely holiday season if you're interested in supporting the channel at the end of the year by all means feel free to do that uh patreon link is in the description and also please Please do like and uh, you know subscribe to the channel if you have a chance to do that. Thank you so much, and I will talk to you when I'm back in the United States. Bye bye.